Greetings, ladies and to the players. It is probably still February, but it could be March. I think it's February still. But it's likely a Friday, making it a wonderful day for basics, and you might be wondering why I am uncertain as to what month and day it is. That's because I've got a little bit of a lecture coming for you, fine, gentle folks. This one I've been wanting to do for a while. I've been wanting to explain in a really basic way how groups get killed. <laughs> yes, yes, how do groups die? That is what I want to explore today. And I, I thought about just like uh, blitzing a bunch of Lodons and showing you how they're going to be killed. And I realized I there's no guarantee that it's going to that they're going to hit on, like, the really main ideas that I have in mind. The ideas that you also have in mind when you are trying to murder something. And that's no good. That's not going to work at all. We can't have that, can we? Unlike in-person Go, something that we can have as more and more people are getting their lovely vaccinations... And when you are ready for in-person go again, you want to go to the one-stop shop for in-person go, good old Club, where you could explore ye old map and feast your eyes on the dots of where you might be able to find people to play with you. And of course, it goes without saying, you might want to find something you can play on. It only goes without saying. And you can check out their vintage and rare collection. That's priced pretty affordably. Pretty affordably, got to say. Some of these boards, these table boards, these floor boards are, ooh, ever so nice. Bunch of people seem to be enjoying their purchases, so you might want to give them a good old look. See, you might want to find, might be able to find something, you know, that you're interested in. But if that club, you can find all these wonderful things. Thanks, as always, to them for in part sponsoring these videos. But yes, with the lovely basics, occasionally get into areas where we can kill things. And the question then becomes, darn it! How do I kill groups? I want to kill groups. I want to kill groups. I'm going to kill groups. How on earth do I kill groups? That's your question. And right off the bat, it's the wrong one. Right off the bat, it's the wrong one. And if you are a particularly astute individual, you might already know what about the wording of that question has led you astray. I want to kill groups. I'm going to kill groups. Well, right off the bat, honestly, we don't know that. If a person wants to just not have their group be killed, chances are you, my dear viewer, are not going to be able to do that, however much you might want to. However, what we can do, and what you have been developing and practicing, whether you know it or not, is you can start identifying the scenarios in which a group can be killed. Not because you sat down and you set out to kill groups that day, but because you have been training your eyes to know when we can and cannot kill groups. You can see them. Case in point, this example, one of the easiest ones, and probably one of the ones that uh, you run into if you are practicing your basics, and that is surrounding things and having them die. Because whether we like it or not, we cannot kill a group unless the group is surrounded. Therefore, it can't keep running and it can't keep getting eyes. Makes sense. So the first way and the most common way you're probably running into areas where you can wind up killing groups is through surrounding go, right? You're including people. Case in point, this lovely little six don versus six don game, I am black, starts off with happy little framework. Um, I don't know why I kicked him, but I did just deal with it. We don't really care about Jaseki. What we do care about is keeping things separated and then surrounding things. That's that's first. So here, bonk and bonk. I am all I'm cutting him into three different groups. But note, right now, 
I don't actually expect to kill anything while I'm doing this. But first step, keep things disconnected. If things are all connected up, they're all going to get stronger. Can't kill anything. So, boom. Got this connection. He is coming out. I'm again separating, threatening to immediately surround the one stone. If it's surrounded, there's a chance I can kill it, but not before. He comes out. Strengthening myself. Coming on out. He's wanting to come out so far. As I said, I don't expect to kill anything, but while this is going on, he's not making any territory, so I don't really care. If I do get to kill something, fantastic, that is amazing, love it, love it, love it. But right now, we don't know. So we can't say, you know what? I'm going to kill me a group this game. You can't say that. You have no freaking idea if that's possible or not. If he looks after all of his groups properly, it might not be. Might not be. That's why you want to profit while you're attacking. So, here we go. I made him as heavy as I could by poking at his shape points. And then I'm moving to surround one or the other, right? Like we can see here, I might be surrounding here, or I can go ahead and net over here. One of these two ways, we might be able to surround something. And one of those two ways, like, but to kill something. He defends himself. Okay, then we surround. Now, now that we've surrounded, we still don't know if something's going to die. Just because it's surrounded doesn't mean it's always going to be dead. But this is how we start noticing maybe something can be killed here. We did not answer this stone, because if we did, we'd like play here, here, here. Maybe he comes out and I've lost the surround, right? So we're not playing Puppy Go, and we're surrounding what we can surround. So boop, we've surrounded, giving it a good old try here. Maybe it can die, maybe not. Looks like you know, there's some shape in there, so maybe not. This I played because I want this. It takes away his cut here. And from that, from that, then maybe we can kill something, right? So I leaned on this for strength, but he's he wasn't having it. So like I mentioned, boom, he's alive. So we surround the next thing. Is this going to die? We don't know. We don't know. But we are going to keep surrounding to see if that's a thing or not. He's out, but we're profiting. Next up, the top group. That hasn't gone anywhere, so we surround that next. That right there is one of the things that you've been training uh, throughout the basics to keep things separated and to play the surrounding game. Because Go is called a surrounding game. And I've been saying, and I don't even know how many videos at this point, that means don't let it happen to you. And here we see it on full force against what was I playing here, Six Don, where all we're doing is just surrounding things over and over and over again. Now, this right here brings up another uh, reason why things get killed. He doesn't have an eye yet, but he knows he hasn't been making any territory. So he's trying to limit my growth because obviously. This would be one, two, three by one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, 21 points here. That's a lot of territory on this board right now when he's only been making two, four, five, or six plus a corner enclosure. So obviously he's freaking out about that, which means the top is fully surrounded. We try to go and kill this. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Looking kind of alive ish. All right, seems that it's uh, alive via co, but, 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 you will notice from here, even now, don't really care if it dies or not, because the other group can be surrounded now, too. So sure, that lives, but now the left is surrounded, and from here, it's, it's way too enclosed, and it dies. That is one of the ways... And probably the most popular way groups are going to get killed, right? 
you're going to just keep things separated and you're going to surround them if given the chance. If you do that, the minute they're surrounded, they're a life and death problem. Sometimes, like here and up in here, right? These two instances, the life and death means they're alive. No death. Other times, yeah. Other times it will mean something gets killed. But remember, it's really, really tempting when you start uh, getting good at this to only play to kill. You don't want to do that. Throughout this entire thing, you'll see this. We can get take insane amounts of points on the right hand side. Even if this turned around, even if this turned around and lived, we still have plan B for profit, right? So keep that in mind. Always, always, always keep that in mind. Even if you turn into like the most aggressive player in the history of ever, always keep in mind that extra profit. Because in the event that you've cut off and surrounded, if it doesn't die, we still have that fallback plan. Let's look at another example. Another example. This one's a little bit less uh, less interesting, but it does reinforce the idea that something can die without us being aware of it or expecting it. Like even if we're not, even if we're playing a game where we don't think that something's going to be killed, something might be killed. And some of you may even know what I'm talking about. Uh, this game is one of my Seven Dawn games. And here it was fairly straightforward. My, don't mind the upper left Jiseki, which was absolutely, completely crazy. Uh, only thing to note about this is, yeah, I got out, he got out. Cool, happy days. So far, looks like nothing's dying. We're mostly just playing Jiseki here. Even this one is yeah, really, really disgusting. I'm settling my groups. We decided that was a mistake. Looking after my group because caps and being surrounded really hurts. Just looking after myself for the most part. That's not a move I needed to play. But yeah, right now, can't point to a single thing on this board and say, you know what? That's going to die. Can't do it. Still making some exchanges. He's being mindful of my attempts to kill him. Like I just made an attempt on his life to take a few more points for myself. Right? I threw the idea out there. I'm going after the cut, trying to see if I can keep things separated. Priming up that sequence that I, I just mentioned, right? Where, where maybe we get to keep things separated and then surround and then things get killed, right? Like I'm throwing out the offer, but he's kind of declining me right now. So looks like nothing's going to die. Looks like nothing's going to die. So we keep taking territory. Keep taking big points. Again, we're getting really, really close to a group. Threatening to surround it. Maybe something can die there. Do we expect it? No. But if I let him connect, I know nothing will ever die. So I make sure I do little things like this to make sure things can't connect. Right? Making sure things can't connect. Taking away some of his base. Now he has to live because he doesn't want to be surrounded with no way to live. But even now, you can see he's he's minding his own business. Trying to surround. He's aware of what I'm doing, so he's defending. All We made the attempts. We're cutting things apart. We're threatening to surround things. But he's aware of what we're doing, so he's defending himself properly. This is a game... Did not expect a single group to die. Again, I'm offering the option of him dropping dead, right? I'm threatening to do things like this to resurround groups while I'm profiting. But he just keeps calling no joy. I can't attack. So we go back for profit, right? Over and over and over again. Defending my elephant eye. But yeah, this game did not look like anything was going to die, and we were now in endgame. Um, I think I was ahead in endgame, wasn't I? I am ahead this game, right? Estimate? Wiped by 360 points. Oh, I hate that bug. 
If you play on Fox and you download your games, you know what bug I'm referring to. Yeah, this one right here where it says Comey's 375 points. Okay, that's... Pog. Uh, no, it's 6.5, thank you. Let's try that again, huh? Estimate. Uh, black by 11. That stone's not dead. Yeah, it looks like I, looks like I was ahead here. Uh, my ability to profit while attacking seems like it's uh, doing pretty well. Right? Close game. Close game. Absolutely. Not saying it's not a close game. But we've been taking points, so we're okay. Sweet. He's defending himself up. Going after endgame. Just expect to be going to counting soon. Uh, within too many moves. Just showing up our territory. But... But, 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 but. It's easy to make mistakes in endgame. Really easy to make mistakes in endgame. Case in point, he's trying to get one, two, three, four, five points here. Right? So I send him like, hey, give me these. Give, give me these. I'm taking out his eye, his uh, way to make two eyes. And just trying to take more, two more points. He said no to that. Which made him forget that he needed to be connected here. So we poke, right? Easy mistake to make. He forgot that two eyes here and the connection here is me eye. If I disrupt one, he's got to go back and take the other or maybe get killed. And in end game, little things like that too. This is like the derpy way of getting, of killing something. Like it's a pretty close game. No one's really died, hard fought on both sides. And then someone derps an endgame, which makes boom, cut, and now dead on uh, the inside because this connects back. Hence the me eye that you've got to be constantly aware of, you know? So yeah, that, that didn't go well. And now these are dead and he can't do anything about it. He can save these, but yeah, this is dead no matter what. That's one way things die. It's, it's, not as, it's not as interesting, but you've always got to be aware of it. Especially if you are alive via Mii in Endgame. That is such an easy way to get killed. It's so easy to just like lose track. Like you're going, okay, uh, I got Sente on the first line here. And then uh, what's the next largest Endgame point? Do I save this one stone? Should I Hane here? It's like, yeah, I should probably Hane here afterwards, that Sente, but then the middle's kind of big, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to make sure he can't keep pushing in here soon, so maybe I'll play this one, and then I'll back off into, like, over in here, and, like, as you're thinking about all the various trades for Endgame, you might miss a little Mii, like, here and get killed. Or they might miss a little Mii right there and get killed. Super, 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 super common. Be on the lookout for that. In fact, I would say if you think if you think you're ahead and there's still like a Mii connection leading into endgame, dude, just get rid of it. Don't don't leave that crap to chance. Just just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Because I, I mean I've made the same mistake. Uh I think this week or last week. Week before last, something like that. I had a Mii connection. I forgot all about it. He played, I derped, boom, I'm done. Happens. Not fun. But it happens. Now, that said, let's look, let's look at a more flashy way of killing things. And this one is via trading. This is trades, 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 trades. Oftentimes in Go, someone will play an asking move, like, can I play this move for free? Usually it's uh, attaching to a weak stone or a weak group or whatever. and you usually don't want them to follow up. So sure, they asked if they can get a free move in on you. You agree, things keep going. Or you shoulder hit something, asking, hey, can I cut through here and reduce your territory? And you generally be like, nah, I don't think you're gonna do that. So they got that move in for free. But those are asking moves. And by nature, the fact that they're asking there could be two answers. Yes and no. And a lot of people forget that. A lot of people forget that. Like, 
Forcing moves aren't always forcing moves. They're asking moves. And asking moves can have two answers to it. So this is a game, um, again, seven down game, where there are some asking moves that get asked. And yeah, we both uh, have our own opinions on what the answers to those asking moves should be. So we have here, where it's making a base. Left hand side is very, very common. Blocking the enclosure from the ex or blocking the extension from the enclosure, as per usually, three threes me. Because don't they all at this point? My opinion, I love the board at this point. Got a lot here. He has to go and give me Sente back, otherwise, I'm going to pincer and grow too large. Come on, and he pincers me, because here it does bear mentioning at this point. Um. You're gonna 360, you're gonna 375 it again, aren't you? Yeah, you are. It does bear mentioning at this point that the estimator puts white up by eight points if white keeps every inch of territory that they currently have. The downside of that is this is not territory yet, and the top side is invadable, so that's actually not a thing that can ever happen. Case in point, we go here. Do a little bit of a reduction thing. Now I'm building up again. La 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 la. I missed an easy. I missed an easy point here. Going into this one. Yeah, saw it in review. Saw it in review. This might have been a murder Monday. I don't know, or it was on stream. I forgot. The games kind of blur together. This is a stream game. So here is an example. Here is an example. I've got strength. Got a lot of cutting points. Because there's a lot of cutting points, there's a lot of questions that one has to ask themselves. Do I protect mine? Do I go after his? Like, what are we doing here? He says, I'm going after yours. And I'm like, okay. That means he wants to kill my stones here. Okay. So we go and offer a trade. You can kill my right stones. I'll kill your middle stones. How's that sound? I could answer here now. And then he can play something like this one. And maybe something like this one. And just keep growing here. And it's a lot more peaceful. It's still not bad for me. But this is an asking move. Can I kill your stones? And I, I could let him do it. I could absolutely let him do it because he's got cutting points himself. So he asked me, can I kill you? And I said, sure. Does, can I kill you in return? That's pretty good. You could absolutely kill this and I will absolutely kill this and we will continue on our merry little way. Right? That's kind of an example of the asking move that I, play, that I was mentioning. Like, this cutting point isn't forcing. I don't have to defend if I've got something else I want to do. So he said no to that because he's a jerk. But, you know, I'm rather insistent. So I'm like, I'm going to poke at your cutting point. And he's like, don't, don't cut me. Defending here, not here. Notice I'm still offering him the right. And... That one might be a little bit hard to see. By defending myself in the middle, I'm prepping for an ad another attack on the center stones. But if I just play here, for example, and give him this kind of thing, that's awkward. I might not die to this, but notice I'm the one under attack now. And that's something that I just accept if I say these stones over on the right, these stones over here are the largest thing on the board right now, not the attack through here. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So if I say that, I might fall under attack. So I defend myself. And he's like, well, I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, that's fair. I'm going to connect. Now you can't kill me. Now what do you want to do? He's trying to attack me again because he still wants to lean over here and get rid of my territory. I'm still coming out because I've got two things to attack now. 
and we're netting this middle group in the bottom. Again, with the asking moves, he wants my two stones. Sure, have them. I'm interested in the middle. Take the two stones and connect. I'm not going to be greedy, right? He read correctly. This allows him to potentially uh, kill these two stones if I cut him. He read that out correctly, but it wasn't the only variation. So he gets to take that. I got to take those. I'm, I, I, I like this. A lot of strength in the middle. And now he wants to cut and he wants to kill his cutting stone. So he leans over and asks me, another asking move, can I surround you on the left-hand side? It might kill you. And I'm like, you know what? You can do that. I'm going to go and cut your and kill your cutting stones or your larger cutting stones. So yeah, you can absolutely surround me. He's starting to kill me in, on the left-hand side of the board. 100%. Just like he was threatening to kill my three stones on the right-hand side. 100%. But just because he's asking me to respond doesn't mean I have to if there's something else that I have that I want to do that's larger. So we have this, and then bam. Surrounding the middle. He can kill my left now. He can go over there and try to kill my left now. But. It's probably worth the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stones. I don't have to capture, right? They're just completely surrounded. So we get the nine and then 10, 11, 12, or eight, sorry, 18, because there's nine. Not, so nine times two, 18. And then 19, 20, 20, 20 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So, who oh boy. We got like 30 points there in that middle. We got like 30 points there in that middle. That's probably not even worth 30 points. That's probably not even worth 30 points. So beware of asking moves. If you've been studying your shape, you've been studying your cut points, you're making good shape for the most part, so your groups are nice and strong, then these asking moves may have more answers to them than you think. Again, not basic, which is why I haven't been doing this in basics, but I wanted to cover these concepts that don't always come up in basics, right? Like, I get to play with these kind of ideas at Seven Don because I've already uh, put in the work from my basics to get here, right? And, and so can you. And so can you. You just have to make sure that your shape's good. Your knowledge of what's small and large is pretty good. Otherwise, you might not be sure if giving this up is okay because that's a lot of territory. But yeah, once you work on your basics, you start getting all that kind of good stuff happening. You, you start seeing these things, which completely transforms your games and starts giving branches that you didn't really even know existed before. It's really fun. It's really fun. Um, let's go ahead and look at one more example to round out today's video. Just just four examples, but oh, there's so much, there's so much uh, information. That's like in all of these. I could probably do like one video on each of these topics. And if that's something that you actually want to see in the future, just let me know in the comments down below. This one's another one that you probably see a lot. This is probably one you see a lot. This is the unreasonable invasion kill. So here I am, seven done again, uh, as black. And I'm growing some influence, I'm assuming, I think. I don't remember this game. Uh... Again, don't have to connect. If something larger I want to do, which there is, so we're growing. Oh, I remember this now. I remember this now. Yeah, he's attaching, asking if I can reduce. Yeah, buddy, reduce me. I'm going to keep building, though, so you have fun with that, right? And so at this point, he's getting a little nervous because I'm leaning to grow heavily, and I've got influence and ways to build here. So, okay. But then we just surround, like, like I've been mentioning. Just surrounding. Is he going to live? Probably, but it's okay. Because we're profiting, right? I am profiting while we're doing this. And he's still running out. Give me my influence. Give me my strength. Again, he's going to live. He's going to live, I think, right? He did live, right? 
Yeah, he probably he probably wins the coat. Because we don't care about the coat at this point, right? Yeah, take that coat. Take that take that nasty old coat. But I do have the wall now. Because again, we weren't going all in on a kill. We weren't going all in on a kill. We're profiting while we're keeping him unsettled. Now we block this group, uh, Kinsho, blocking this group from coming in. We've blocked this entire group from coming in, and he can't really come in here or here either. So, you know what's happening next, right? It's the unreasonable invasion. We set ourselves up for it. We built heavily. And he just can't lay down and let us take all that center. So here comes the unreasonable invasion. Got the cutting point to maximize Aji. Good, good. Love it, love it. I misplayed here a little bit. Not going to go over how. There's something that I completely missed here. This shouldn't have been a co. This shouldn't have even been connected, but whatever. Just building up again. And bam. Throws a stone in because it's too much. Right? If he doesn't throw a stone in. If he doesn't throw a stone in. Come on. Let's go. If he doesn't throw a stone in, then what do we got? Estimate. What? How would how would this be reduced? I don't make any sense. How are these alive? Okay, these stones are dead, and I'm up by thirty-seven point five. Uh, but it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20. It's okay. I'm up to by 57 points, roughly, if I keep that middle. So obviously, he's going to try and do something about that. So he plops a stone in, and immediately we look after our uh, weak shapes. Two space connection, defending it. Right? We can kill this if he can't work against anything to his advantage. If he can't. Uh, milk that Aji into having magic happen. And right now, one of the things we could do is allow this kind of struggle to take place, right? Giving him forcing move after forcing move into maybe even a solid eye. That's how things start living on you. So, we block that problem. Small Knight, you're tempted to immediately be greedy. But now I'm being surrounded in my own area. That's cringe. That's so cringe. So we're not doing that. And we're just going to poke at it instead. He hit me. We respond. Absolutely. Trying to cut through me. No, 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 no. Responding to his attempts to attack. This is Gote because this can't get to here yet. Therefore, we get to poke at his shape point again. We're not going to Hane, because if I Hane, I might lose the ability to cut. So we're backing off solid, not giving him anything to work against. Forcing him into heavy shapes, like that. False eye. Next shape point taken away. Same thing. Make sure this can't go to there. Back off solid, so he we can... Like, he can take this, right? This is his now. If he wants those stones, that's fine. But the inside gets killed, so it's fine. Therefore, this is never a thing. If he backs down here, we got this one. Easy, nice, simple life, right? Keep him disconnected. He cuts me. We don't leave Atari behind. We don't leave Atari behind. Still poking out of shape. This one you probably didn't need. I, I probably could have played here right now. Because even if he plays this one, there's things like this, right? And I'm not sure if there's even a solid eye here right now. Maybe there's one. No, not really, huh? Yeah, even this is not a solid eye yet. So this one might be a little bit a little, little bit little bit much. A little bit much. But connect it up. Again, not giving him those free moves to get potentially uh, more eyes here. Just backing off instead. Threatening to cut through also, which is really good. And now we have a choice. We could say, all right, because we had profit on our in our in the back of our mind. Maybe maybe he lives here, right? 
Maybe he lives here now. There, that's alive, right? But we've separated the out the uh, the top side of it, right? So it, it's fine. Uh, as it stands, we just drop. I didn't cut through. Yeah, we just drop down, and he resigns because there's nothing he can do. He wants to play here, but this isn't an eye. This isn't even connected. Connecting its gote. And then maybe, I don't know, double tap that, I guess. And then the whole middle's dead. And we do that by not leaving things behind for him to work against. Like, I'm not going to be like, okay, now I'm going to play over here. And then, oh dear, I'm... Oh no. Now it looks like I'm leave I've, I've just left him a lot of Audrey to work against. So much Audrey to work against. Can I even still kill this? I don't even know. I don't even know. Can it, does this actually die? He's got one eye solid, and now I'm being surrounded again. Because I left him Audrey to work against, because I wasn't looking after my, my stones, right? So, always looking after our groups. Try not to create cutting points for him. If we can avoid it. You know? And just making sure, as long as we're connected, we can keep poking at his next shape point over and over and over again. You see this a lot, especially if you're an influential player. Or if you are successfully surrounding someone, you're getting influence regardless, right? Because here we just surrounded him in the middle, which gave us the middle influence. And then suddenly you have to live in there. And they, they almost always, I don't care if you're on Fox, Tygem, OGS, KGS... Uh, I don't care if you're playing in the U.S. Open or European, whatever. They're going to try to live in there, right? They will try that last desperate invasion to try to make a miracle happen. And those are cool because that's when your prey comes to you, you know? That's when, that's when your prey comes to you. And you got to make sure you're nice and solid while you're doing that. Because if you leave cutting points behind and all the other good stuff, they'll make magic happen. They'll live. They will, in fact, live. Like I said, all of these, all of these, uh, these various ways of killing groups, whether you're trading, whether you're getting things killed in endgame, whether you're surrounding things, or dealing with unreasonable invasions. Like, I think all of these could be their own video. Maybe they will be in the future. But right now I wanted to give like a general overview for basics on basically how groups can get killed. Very rarely, with the exception of the unreasonable invasion, but that really wasn't alive ever in the first place. It's never by setting out and saying, that thing there is going to die. I'm amazing. I'm going to kill it. You know, didn't do that in the end game. Didn't do that while we were surrounding. Um, didn't do that while we were trading. Didn't do that with any of that stuff, right? It's just we recognized when those circumstances come up because we know the they might if we're cutting things apart, if we're surrounding things, if we have good shape and our opponent isn't then that's like the red light that goes on and says, hey, look over there. I spy something that's in trouble. And from there, you never know what happens. But yeah, hope you like this different, uh, more luxury video. Hope you have some ideas on uh, how to actually kill groups and maybe corrected some of the false ones you had about how things actually wind up getting killed. And yeah, hope you're enjoying the basic series in general. Until next time, I will see you later. Take care, everybody.